45 or caliber 45. I again don't have a copy because I watched it yesterday and returned it the same day. If my voice sounds a little strange, it's because I'm recovering from pneumonia, but it's been like a week since I last made a video, so, you know, the show must go on, as they say. Cat and Big Al run guns in the streets of New York. It's pretty low level. Cat would actually like to move up and, you know, go places, but Big Al's kind of hesitant. Then one day, in a fit of jealous rage, he beats her. It's not the first time, but it is the worst one yet. With that beating, her independence, her smarts, and her entire self just goes under, you know, it, it, it subsides for a while. And this goes on even though her friends, Vic, a lesbian who's also kind of into Cat, Riley, a former sort of slash current small-time criminal himself, but he is trying to get out of it, he says, and Liz, the social worker assigned to her case. They all try to convince her to leave him. Now, I won't reveal more of what happens, but what I will say is, I personally found it quite satisfying, the ending quite satisfying. This movie is vulgar right from the very start. There are people who are going to put this on and turn it right off after a minute or two. I would say very much look at the warnings, but whatever. Some of the people who will turn it off prematurely may not understand it's setting a mood. It's, it's establishing that this is the way these people talk and behave. There is nearly constant swearing. There's a pretty good deal of sex. There's nudity. All in all, at times it's a very unpleasant movie to watch, but it also just really delves into this environment. It's gritty, it's disgusting, it's really unpleasant, and you spend 88 minutes in this environment and really get to see that basically everyone there is just kind of out for themselves, you know. I think the movie was halfway done by the time I realized that there wasn't a single likable character in it. That's how fast it moved as well. And it didn't take me long to realize after that that that's not necessarily a requirement of a good film. You know, several of Scorsese's best films don't have that many likable characters, if any, you know, Goodfellas, Casino. When it's in this kind of environment, people do behave in a certain way. They aren't, you know, super nice. They don't... They look out for themselves, first and foremost. The acting is fantastic. I really like Mila Jovovich, and... Even I will admit that not all of her performances are quite spot on. She sometimes overacts a bit, and that maybe happens here too. But this is one of her best performances in any movie she's been in. This is also her at her most seductive, cute, and vivacious. But really, everyone acts really well in this. One last thing on Jovovich, if you are a fan of her, this is a movie you have to watch. Whether it's for her talent or it's for her stunningly good looks, this is one to watch. Angus McFadden, F Fadgen, 
don't know how you pronounce that, is also great. I will say it's kind of stupid how this tries to explain his accent away by oh, he went to Scotland as a child and just never lost the accent because he is supposed to be American here. But he is well cast. He is really good in the role of the brutish Big Al. And the beating, it's just, it's so effective. It's so almost overpowering. And... If it wasn't for the ending of this movie, I would say it would be gratuitous, but with the ending, I don't think it is. Don't remember their names. Sarah Strange is the social worker, I think. She's also great. Steven Dorff, really great as the kind of dim uh, Riley. The editing is very fast, very tight. We get some interviews where, you know, people talk directly to the camera. And this could seem gimmicky, but I don't really think that it is in this case. It just adds some things. I mean, the characterization is largely in the scenes themselves, and it is strong characterization. You really get a sense of what these people are like, and they are all extremely credible. I never felt that anyone was just a target or a victim. You know, everyone has personality, and you can talk about, you know, if they're a result of the environment or, you know, what exactly made them that way, but they are very credibly that way. You know, there's no cookie-cutter hero or villain in this. There's a lot of handheld camera, and it's not Paul Greengrass, doesn't give you a headache, it just works. It puts you in the scene without making itself noticed. You know, Paul Greengrass, you can always tell. There's someone moving the camera all the time. In this, it's very subtle, it, much more subtle, at least. And it just feels like you're there, you're a witness, you're practically in the situation with them. And it just makes it more effective. I think that is about it. This is a movie to watch if you're a fan of the Scorsese kind of crime drama, you know, if you want to delve into an environment and, you know, feel like you're almost part of it. It's not for people who want to see a glamorized vision of, version of whatever they're watching. It's very uncensored. It goes about as far as it can without being rated worse than an R, basically. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of 45, or Caliber 45. Hope you enjoyed it.